Yeah, good day. It's ZL2 CTM. I'm just back between trips for a couple of days, so um, I thought I'd do a quick video uh, looking at um, the amplifier that I've um, I've made up here. So I've done I've done two things um, just recently. I've uh, I made up a um, an amplifier there to overcome the losses of the low pass filter, uh, which with, with quite a bit of heavy um, feedback there, which I'll talk about. And I've also made an external low pass filter. The AD9850 has an on-board low-pass filter, um, and there was some comment online that uh, that particular filter itself could be helping to cause the output of the AD9850 um, to drop off at the higher frequencies. Um, so um, I just elected to take all of those surface-mounted devices off. Um, if I was to pull this off here, um, they were populated all down here, so um, I've taken all those off board and just taken the output of the 9850 now directly to um, the output pin and then made up an external uh, Butterworth filter there. So that, that particular filter there is uh, designed uh, with a cutoff frequency of 70 megahertz um, and for 50 ohms. Um, so just looking at both of those in turn, oh, we might as well start off with the, uh, with the filter. So like I say, that was a, uh, a Butterworth filter, so to try and give a, a maximally flat response. Um, just used one of the online uh, calculators for that, just made it nice and easy, uh, and came out with these values here. So um, th these particular capacitors at the end needed to be uh, um, 22 odd picofarads. Um, I've elected just to use two tens in parallel. Um, 82 picofarads in the middle, and then uh, those are the exact uh, inductances um, called out for in the in the actual design calculator. What I've elected to use is a T37-6, which gives me the wider um, frequency range there. Um, and then for the 141, I've just gone with seven turns, which gives me 150 nanofarads. And I'll try and look to spread the turns there to reduce that down a bit. And then for the 227, gone with nine turns, which gives 240 and again looking to, to spread the turns there to, to get about right. Um, and that's exactly what's been built up there. The amplifier itself, if you recall, um, all I was trying to achieve there was to overcome um, the losses through that low pass filter um, and aiming to get at the output uh, which is going to be of that filter which is the input to the device under test about one volt peak to peak. That was, was the aim. Um, making life a little bit hard by using a 5 volt rail there, but uh, it's, it seems to work out quite well. So that's the configuration there. Um, in fact there is a subtle difference there. The uh, emitter resistor there is fully bypassed and then just using that um, feedback there to, to uh, vary the gain. And again the whole idea there was uh, with a typical filter with, with no real feedback, uh, the gain tends to drop off with frequency. So gain versus frequency. And then by uh, applying more and more negative feedback, we can drive the gain down. Um, and the advantage is that is we then get a, a much wider bandwidth for any given gain. Um, which was the whole idea of providing that, uh, that feedback there. So anyway, so it's a common emitter amplifier. Um, elected to go with a transformer in the collector circuit. Uh, no real difference there. Uh, 2N3904. So um, setting the quiescent DC current at 10 milliamps uh, and then finding an HEFE from the spec sheet uh, again using that geometric mean approach. So the square root of the minimum value in the spec sheet times the maximum value in the spreadsheet for 10 milliamps uh, comes out at 173. Uh, this is just using that value there for the various numbers. So for the emitter resistor, again setting up that emitter to be a tenth of VCC, so 0.5. Uh, then divided by uh, 10 milliamps comes out to be 50 ohms. So we'll use a 51 ohm resistor there, nice and easy. R2, uh, that value there. So it's going to be half a volt there, which is a tenth VCC plus 0.7, so 0.5 plus 0.7, then divided by uh, 10 times the base current. So 10 times our uh, collector current, which is approximately equal to, or close enough, equal to our emitter current, divided by 173 or our beta DC. Uh, it comes out at uh, 2076 ohms, so uh, 2k ohms is close enough. Um, R1, 
the top resistor in that voltage divider biasing there. Uh, so it's going to be 5 volts minus the voltage there, divided by 11 times the base current now. And that comes out to be 5976. So we'll use a, uh, a 5.8, which doesn't exist. It's actually used a 5.6. Uh, 5.6 km resistor. Uh, now the transformer itself, I'm um, just going to keep it really simple here and just aim to throw 200 ohms into the collector circuit uh, for a 50 ohms on the secondary. So our turns ratio using a T37-43, uh, N equals the square root of 200 ohms divided by 50, gives us an N equals 2. Um, and in the past uh, we'll use for that lowest frequency uh, 12 to 6, so 12 turns on the primary the collector side and then six turns on the secondary side which will be then uh, feeding into the low pass filter. Now for the feedback there um, just using a hundred nanofarad uh, capacitor there just a DC block so we're not um, sh essentially shorting our collector with our base so DC blocking there and then using a combination of LT spice um, and some actual uh, tests down here uh, determined that a value of 270 ohms uh, was about right. So that's what we end up with. So that's uh, what we see there and uh, it's it's not too bad. Um, I think it's close enough for where I want to be. So again the whole idea was just to overcome the losses of, of that particular filter. So top response there is our input um, and that's the output across our range of frequencies. So she's in terms of gaining this right there 10, 12, yeah the input's starting to drop off so we're seeing the output drop off but um, in terms of a reasonably wide bandwidth that's certainly uh, a lot better than not having as expected um, um, uh, that, that feedback. So um, I shouldn't stop saying um but I will it again but never mind. Uh, the approach will be I'm going to live with that, so I'm, I'm not too concerned that I don't have a maximally flat amplifier from say 1 megahertz all the way through to 30 megs, because I'm pretty um, convinced now the approach I'm going to take is um, have a calibration routine built on the software. So essentially um, have the software get run through a, a, a calibration routine, um, work out what the drop off is in overall gain versus frequency. Um, Invert that by adding that to the uh, the test signal, and we should come out with um, hopefully a, a reasonably accurate uh, measurement. So that's all the approach there. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to um, pause, and I'll come back with the uh, the test setup reconfigured uh, with the 8307. So I've done a few more little playing around with that, and uh, it's hard to understand a little bit more, but um, introducing yet another problem. So let me just pause there, and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I've got the um, the test configuration here, um, well the test setup reconfigured to look at the, the AD8307 board that's down here. Um, one difference I have done from the last video is I'm now running this at 5 volts. So we've got a voltage converter here which is dropping our 13.8 volts down to spot on 5 volts. Uh, and as a consequence, what we're now seeing uh, in terms of the output is we're seeing the, the output voltage very much now in line with uh, the documentation that came with this. In other words, at the higher levels around that sort of 10 dBm, uh, giving that 2.5 and slightly above in terms of volts. Um, and if you recall with the last video, um, I was just about a whole volt lower than that and we're running that down at 3.3 volts. So that was interesting because there's nothing to suggest in the documentation that uh, you needed to run it at 5 volts in order to um, correlate reasonably well with that table. Um, and it seems to be working quite well. So um, the 8307 um, will vary 25 millivolts per dB. So we've got two I've, I've adjusted the output of the SIGGEN, which is currently on 1 megahertz to give me roughly spot on 2.5 volts. So theoretically now if I dial in uh, 10 dB, so 8 plus 2 equals 10, um, I should decrease by 0.25 volts, which we're seeing there pretty well spot on. Uh, add another 10 dB, gives us 20, so I'll take that 10 off and I'll push down the 20. 
and now there we're we're pretty close to dropping down that 0.5 not quite there but you know sort of close enough uh, so that's good so um, that's 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 good to know but what I'm sort of struggling with at the moment and I'm not quite sure how to get around it is at the moment that's the input so that's coming from the well, actually coming from the switched attenuator into our 8307 so if I was to disconnect the input and I'll disconnect both um, we're getting an output down there of around 0.5 volts uh, the spec sheet again the table that comes with it suggests it's sort of around that 0.3 odd uh, volts is around that minus 80 um, minus 80 dBm on the input now of interest if I was to now just to very quickly disconnect that input totally you see it now drop down a little bit further now 0.38 close the lid um, not a huge decrease but you know a little bit there so the problem I'm sort of struggling with and I don't know how to overcome is if I now disconnect that back up again no matter what I connect to this input um, that's going to shoot up so and what I mean by that is let me just plug the sig gen back in again so that's now reconnected we're back up to where we were I'm now going to disconnect entirely that cable that's feeding through to here and as you can see we haven't dropped down to 0.5 like we had before so again just disconnect this bit here and now we're dropping that down to that sort of 0.47 to 0.5 um, and that's with nothing in so where I'm going and, and what I'm sort of struggling with is how I don't, I don't know how others have accounted for the fact that any wire connected to the input of the 8307 is effectively acting like an antenna and I suspect it's picking up around here oh I don't know probably AM radio stations or whatever um, because this is an extremely high gain uh, amplifier in the 8307 and as a consequence it's providing an output so if I was to now analyze um, a device under test for example here a, a low pass filter um, how do I, I'm just wondering how I'm going to accurately um, evaluate the stop band so or it could be a crystal filter um, where I'm sort of wanting to get down to that sort of minus 60 dBm um, or minus 60 dB of attenuation in the stop band I don't know how I'm actually going to measure that because uh, as soon as I connect any anything to the input of this or in the input of the 8307 I should say the output jumps up so that one I'm a little bit struggling with uh, what I did try and do just to try and eliminate um, any stray external RF impacting this is I put the whole setup here into a, uh, a metal container a, sh a shielded metal container um, no difference no difference at all so uh, that's interesting and I, I really you know if anybody out there knows or suggests a way of overcoming that please sing out um because uh, i'm not quite sure what's the best way of, of having this overall set up and then being able to evaluate or to analyze a device under test and get a good accurate reading in this particular case or what i'm sort of struggling with is the stop band um i don't know how to get around that one so it's quite interesting so you, know, you disconnect that again and bang it drops all the way down um, and it doesn't take much you know here's a here's a little fly lead here I was to touch it on there and up she goes again so it, it doesn't take very much at all now my hands obviously on this but if I was to use you know, here's another little thing here just plug that on take my hand all off and there we are back up to um, back up to one volt so as you can see there it takes very very little to to really make this output increase so there you go uh, it's all about experimenting and playing around so more things to think about but uh, like I say be curious to know um, how others who have built um, SNAs around the 8307 um, have uh, have taken that into consideration anyway I want to say 73 is here um, Better go and pack my bag again and uh, off for another week or so. But uh, otherwise, let's keep playing around and uh, we'll keep experimenting. Cheers all.